What's up boys and girls, Coach Neek here, and today we're talking about Conor Ben and the doping scandal surrounding his recent, well, now delayed, upcoming fight with Eubank Jr. So, what exactly happened? Conor Ben, if you don't already know, is a professional UK boxer um, who has got quite a good uh, following, he's a champion, yeah, he's a champion at one point, and uh, he, was, he was titled, no, scheduled to fight Eubank Jr., another um, fighter of a, of a previous champion. Loads of build up around that is you know getting getting garnering a lot of attention, a lot of hype around it, until the bugger got popped for enclomiphene, which is a serum, a selective estrogen receptor modulator, generally used in the bodybuilding community as a post cycle therapy drug, so you use it after you run steroids. However, it can be used in monocyc like in monotherapy, to basically to increase your uh, natural testosterone production. It can be used in that manner. So uh, as a standalone agent, it can just be used to increase your performance through those vectors. Obviously, we have no idea how uh, and why he would deploy it. It could be that he used a, he could have used anabolics, for example, he could have used uh, test no, no ester, TNE, or he could use test propionate. He could have done those in fast releasing areas such as his shoulders, and um, yeah, again, the deep muscular injection, injection is not subcutaneous, so his detection time would have been very short. Meaning that if he timed everything correctly, he'd only be found out for the you know post psychotherapy drug Clomid, or he could have used Clomid as a mono thing, as I already alluded to. But he has claimed he's innocent. He's claimed, in fact, that the reason why he's popped positive for Clomid is because he eats a lot of eggs, thirty to forty per week, in fact. Now you may be wondering. Why would there be Clomid in eggs? And is is that even a legitimate excuse? Is that something that could actually uh, happen in real, real life? If you eat a lot of eggs personally, are you going to be subject to increased Clomid exposure? Are you basically taking a serum for the consumptions of excessive egg eating? What is, you know, what's 40 divided by 7 anyway? That's not an awful lot, is it? It's what, 6 eggs a day almost? Um, so that's not... <laughs> That's not an obscene amount of eggs. I mean, it's a lot, but that's not obscene. Um, but regardless, regardless, I've done my research. Uh, I keep poultry, so I'm au fait with uh, ch chickens' drug metabolizations. Uh, you need to know these kind of things for antibiotics and that kind of stuff. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, first, the biggest, most obvious thing is that Clomid use in poultry is banned within the UK. You're not allowed to give chickens Clomid. You're not allowed to. But let's just go into why you'd use it. For poults, poults are basically chickens that are essentially teenagers. They are going through puberty and they're developing their ovaries for hens to then start develop, sorry, to then start egg production. So if you use Clomid, eight weeks prior to when they're expected to lay, you can then increase the um, the yield and how quickly they start producing eggs, okay? So Clomid's great for poults who aren't laying yet. The uh, recommended use from studies, the latest one being in 2021, is to withdraw Clomid treatment eight weeks prior to the expected laying time. Now, if you do that, you'd increase how much, how many eggs they lay um, within a yearly block, uh, as well as how fast they actually develop. So you get chickens that start laying sooner and more uh, consistently, which is great if you're in it for financial service, you know, reasons and you want to get chickens in, chickens out, because chickens have a finite amount of eggs they can actually produce within the first two years of having them, they will get rid of them and replace it with new stock. So you want this fast conveyor belt of quickly producing chickens where you're not having to rear them and have to basically have to try and keep up with their maintenance, you know, their feeding uh, and that kind of thing. You want to get them in and out as soon as possible. So that's why Clomid would be, would be used. Okay, so very well and good. Okay, so eight weeks prior to when they lay, they stop using Clomid. What's the likelihood then that these eggs of these poults that have had Clomid in the past still contain traces of Clomid? Zero. Absolutely zero chance. So in the studies that have looked in Clomid uh, retention within the chicken meat as well as the eggs they find that the eggs can have it traces of clomid within them for up to 14 days but this is for hens that are currently laying not poults that have been treated eight weeks prior to being laying so if you gave a, <laughs> if you gave them an injection or a powdered or liquid formulation of clomid to a laying hen within 14 days her eggs will no longer hold clomid 
her meat will hold it for a shorter duration in and out quicker. So let's set up the scenario of which Connor Ben is arguing. He has somehow got hold of eggs that are not from the UK or being illegally doped with Clomid within the UK. For some reason, the farmer has also decided to give his laying hens Clomid, which will reduce their yield. So they won't actually produce as many eggs if you give it to a laying hen. I haven't mentioned that yet. So not only is, is this farmer breaking the law by giving his chickens Clomid, he's also reducing his own profit margins by having by getting less eggs over a period of time. Um, and for whatever reason, he's given them to a, a tested athlete. All of this doesn't make sense. All of it makes no sense. Again, I want to reiterate, the only practical application for Clomid in poultry is eight weeks prior to when they lay. If you give a currently laying hen Clomid, it will substantially reduce her egg output. Clomid only stays within the eggs for 14 days, and that is the extreme outlier, you know, if I'm a if you look at a distribution chart, 14 days is over here, it's not at the peak. The peak or something around like 10 days, I think. So that's only, like, you know, give it, give it the uh, 14 days, it's two weeks. So none of it makes any sense. It just doesn't make sense. And if he got it from a farmer overseas who imported the eggs, you still have the head scratcher of, hey, well, these eggs shouldn't have clomid in them anyway, because they, the farmer, if he's got any brains, would only be giving Clomid to the poults, not to his laying hens. So again, that doesn't make any sense. Wada, released, Wada did a study giving hens Clomid and testing the Clomid you know, detection time within the eggs and then how that may um, be transferred to humans. And they did show, and Connor ben, Connor ben is highly leaning on this study to show that, hey, look, Wada said... If a hen has Clomid and you eat those eggs, then you will get Clomid in your system. And that is why you popped me, bro. It's because I was eating eggs. It's not because I was slamming orals to try and boost my testosterone or I have suppressed my HPTA and now I need to get back online again. It's because I eat eggs. It's it's almost as bad as the liver king debacle. It really is. It's This is one of the biggest problems. This is a slight tangent, but this is one of the biggest problems when it comes to studies and people pointing their fingers at studies go, hey, look, this proves my point. Is that, yes, chickens that have Clomid will, you know, (laughs) if you give chickens Clomid, you will get Clomid within the eggs. You eat enough eggs and yes, you will then get detectable levels of Clomid within your body. Yes, that's all very well and good. It's true. But if you actually put that into context of real world application, suddenly that truth no longer makes sense in practical application it just wouldn't make sense to do it it's the i can't think of a analogy off the top of my head uh you know i do i do all these videos off the fly um but it, it just doesn't make sense when you put it into context a farmer wouldn't give his livestock drugs medication when he has to pay for which would then reduce his yield which then reduces income because it reduces profit margins and if he does it in the uk he's then liable to uk law and then he would be uh criminal offenses i'm sure there's probably some welfare standards in there which he'd be breaking as well so to me personally and again this is all an opinion it's all an opinion I'm not a professional, you know, I don't have, um, I'm not a doctor basically, so don't come at me saying that you're lying because it's just my opinion, bro. And my opinion is, is that there's no way Connor Ben could have detectable levels of clone within his body from eating eggs from the UK or from an intelligent farmer. And all farmers always, I mean, the ones that I know at the very least are always trying to get more money because they don't have any, you know, I have a small holding and I live hand to mouth most of the time as well. Like having animals is expensive and you try and cut corners where you can. That is if you are up for maximum profit, that is anyway. I'm too soft on my animals. <laughs> um, so the bottom line of this is, I personally don't think Connor Ben is telling the truth. I think he has been doping. I do not think that the, his excuse is valid. I think the wider study is limited. And if you look at the studies and research I've alluded to in this video, you'll see that I'm telling the truth. I don't think Connor Ben has a leg to stand on. I do think he should be punished accordingly. Um, regardless, though, I'd like to know what you guys think. Write down in the comments below. You know, DM me on Instagram. Have a chat about it. I always enjoy the back and forths. 
Um, have a look in the description for my links if you want blood tests and for me to analyze them. Again, hit me up on Instagram, we'll go through it together. If you want consults to go through various health problems or um, for health optimization, then also um, offer those services. It can be as simple as, hey, I feel tired, how do I help myself? That's the kind of thing I come into. Also, for steroid cycle designs, I will specialize in that as well. Any of that sounds fun to you, go to my Instagram, start a conversation, let's have a chat about it. That's it for now, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. If you made it this far, like the video. <laughs> Comment below, say you got this far. I don't think anyone would have, would have gotten this far. Let's be honest, it's a 10 minute, 10 minute video and I'm rambling. If you did make it this far, comment bear down below. I'd be interested to see if anyone actually does that. Does do that. Well, that's it for this video. Again, thank you for watching. Uh, with at risk of repeating myself, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Peace.